This is a blackjack video. I'm going to explain why basic strategy cannot, will not work properly in the long run, short run, or any time because the math and the entire concept of it is inaccurate today. First of all, in a six to eight deck game, the way it's played now, the dealer generally tries to cut a deck, deck and a half to two decks, depending on where it's at. But it's never the same. It's always different. And these cards, you don't know what they are. They could be anything. They could be a com they could be a bunch of high cards. They could be a bunch of low cards. They could be anything. I mean, according to uh, random and probability, it could be anything. So that right there is one of the reasons why it does not and cannot work. And that's the bottom line. You cannot use basic strategy consistently all the way through and expect to win. It is guaranteed to lose you money. Each time you cut the dealer cuts the deck before uh, they're ready for play, it's always different. It's never the same. It's never accurate. Those few cards make the difference with the randomness. So it just will not work. So you're better off saving your money and learning a different system of some sort. This is another blackjack video and I'm going to explain why basic strategy doesn't work and it will not work and is guaranteed to lose you money. Um, most players whether they're counters, whether they're playing basic strategy, or just people having fun. What really everybody is doing when they are making money in blackjack is they're winning off the hot streaks. You know, when the good cards are just coming out and it's they're falling into place. Everybody has trouble with uh, the 15s and the 16s, obviously, and even the 14s and the 13s. But 15, 16, uh, that's, that's one of the places where... Um, people have a lot of trouble with. Everybody following basic strategy almost always hits. Um, it's not supposed to be like that. Even if you look at Thorpe's original book, when uh, you would have a three card 16 against a 10, you're supposed to stand. Even though that was for single deck originally developed. But uh, the ideas, they're, they're based, they're very deep and based on a variety of different factors. But realistically, when you hit 16, uh, you have a 60% chance of busting. Now, Julian Braun, when he created it, people don't understand that it was created with a single deck uh, infinite shuffle. So, basic strategy was designed originally. Single deck infinite shuffles. That means that the simulations that were done, the millions of simulations, all these hands, they were the cards just went back in, and the, what was being spit out was variations of that. Now, obviously when the multiple uh, deck games or blackjack basic strategy charts were coming out and the various systems coming out, it's still based upon that foundation. Now, there are, there are shufflers, automatic shufflers, that do infinite shuffling. Then there's ones that are not. But the point is, is that it's already flawed. It's already flawed. Basic strategy from Julian Braun, and that's what you see online or in books, that's basically what it is. It's from him and it's based on that. Infinite shuffle single deck and they are now modifications of that for multiple deck. But it's still the same. Um, the sequencing is based off that infinite shuffle, not a countdown as cards are played being eliminated and then the combinations being spit out based on that, millions of combinations based on that as they're coming down. Or how many games, or how many, you know, how many times does it come uh, go down to zero? But also because of where the dealer cuts, it alters it. So it is null and void. It's actually, com it's completely inaccurate. It's very, very flawed. 
and it will lose you money in the long run. A lot of people believe that in the long run, basic strategy helps you. It does not because it is completely and absolutely flawed. It is pretty much unscientific. It's promoted as scientific, but it is not. And don't forget, basic strategy was designed to count cards. It was in, supposed to be used in conjunction with that. And if you're not basically counting cards, then it's null and void. Also, because where the dealer cuts in a 6-8 to eight deck game changes everything about it. People, when they made money originally in single deck blackjack, it's because they knew what was uh, towards the end of the deck, what was down there. And that's where the big money was bet and won. But now, because of where they cut it with so many decks, it is virtually impossible to properly predict. Everything you see online, in books, all this stuff, it's a bunch of BS. In fact, I believe that the casinos and people that uh, profit from casinos promote these books, videos, everything. It's nothing more than a scam. And that's the bottom line. It's the truth. That's why when... When people are using basic strategy at a casino, pay attention. Almost everybody in a damn casino is using basic strategy. Most people know it. And what's really going on? How many people are really winning and losing when you're at a casino? Now, the people that are winning, it's not because they're using basic strategy. It's because they're the hot streaks that eventually come about. And it could come about for anybody, regardless how you're playing. They come, but when they don't come, you're losing, regardless whether you're using basic strategy or not or some other strategy. So what it really is is you have to have patience, wait for the hot streaks, and then you capitalize on them. But that's really what's going on. And most people don't see it that way. And there's just a bunch of BS promoted, and people think they know what they're doing. They're playing with big money. They're losing money. And it's just wrong. That's why I'm creating these videos, because there's too much nonsense uh, out there on it. It's just not sim It's not true. It's completely flawed. Completely. Remember, it's infinite shuffle that basic strategy was based on one deck. When they did the multiple decks charts, it was nothing more than a variation and alteration of that. Now, all the all the uh, formulas and things you see in these books, um, they're they're null and void. It does. It can't. You cannot predict. You cannot. They cannot simulate where in real life in a game where a dealer is going to cut the deck. They cannot simulate that because it's always different. So those suggestions on any basic strategy chart are arbitrary. I'm going to discuss the flaws of the high-low card counting system. Uh, first of all, in High Low, which was created by Harvey Dubner and introduced to the blackjack world through Ed Thorpe's book, Beat the Dealer, the second edition, um, 7, 8, and 9 are valued as zero. They are not tracked. They're tracking 10s, they're tracking 2 through 6, and the ace is given a plus 1. So it's basically like a 10. Now let's really look at this. How many times in a game, in a game, does 7, 8, and 9, when a dealer is showing these cards, beat you? Also, how many times do you win with 7, 8, and 9? For it not to be viewed or tracked is completely flawed and ridiculous. These cards are valuable and should be dealt with considered and valued. Um, another thing is the ace. Let's look at the ace. It is a 1 and it's also an 11. So it functions as both the lowest and the highest card. As an 11 it gives us the magical 21. Now, properly uh, viewing these cards as high and low, if you're going to count, think about it. If you have a value from 1 to 10, it's midpoint, it's 5. If you have a value from 1 through 11, it's midpoint, it's 
is 5.5. So realistically, the high part of the cards starts at 6. You're already beyond the line. That's already going into the high uh, card territory. 7, 8, 9. These are definitely high cards. When you're at 16, another 6, you lose when you hit. If you're at five, at 15, you hit, you get a 6, you win. You lose with this, you lose with the 8, you lose with the 9. So, the real high cards start at 6. And that's one of the differences between the way I view cards and these systems out there. They originally, the way they uh, devised the values was the percentages of what cards affect the game and all this and that, which was originally done with a single deck. And that's where these values came from, where 5 was valued very high and the ace was valued high when they're missing, etc. Um, this is basic blackjack knowledge. But this is how they came up with these point values. And various systems, they, they address these issues and based on those point values. But that is not uh, practical right now, especially in 6 to 8 deck, because think of how many cards you have in 6 to 8 deck that win. With, with Dealer could be showing 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. These are all crushing hands. <clears throat> how many times in multiple deck games do you lose when dealers are showing these cards? as well as how many times do you win when dealers are showing these cards, especially the 7, 8, and the 9. When a dealer ha is showing a 7, 8, or 9, you know it's serious. Because if he has a 10 under there or an ace, he's got a winning hand. Okay. And the same thing with you. You're comfortable when you see these cards on your side. So that is one of the things that um, must, must be dealt with for people that count cards or to at least advance blackjack knowledge is we got to get rid of these old ways of looking at things remember the high cards start at 5.5 the ace is a 1 the ace is an 11 it's an alpha and omega it's in the beginning and it's in the end it's at both ends and it functions as both and should realistically be valued and considered and equated because that is how it actually works. It's not just a high card. It's not just a low card. It's both. So 5.5 right there. That's where your low ends and your high cards begin. This is the card counters challenge. This is to test your card counting system for professionals and none and see how good it really is. Uh, first, get yourself six to eight decks. I only have two here, simply for handling purposes. And obviously, in the real world game of blackjack, we have the dealer's cut card. The game goes to that point. Those cards are not uh, counted. Because you can't count them. You don't know what's in there. That's the re whole reality and the point of this. And you don't know the ratios of the low to high from there to in here. So, go through your game. Do your count. And when you're done, simply go through them all over again. Twice. See the ratio. Count the high to low. Write it down. And I don't mean using your uh, system. I mean just literally count how many high and how many low are in what you actually played. And then also count the high to low here as well. What was left out of the game. And then after that, you'll see the results and what the reality really is. You'd be surprised at what you might find.